who's already started their holiday baking. I thought I had a voice this morning, but I'm just now talking, and it's almost noon. <laughs> you have nobody to talk to. You have no reason to talk, right? Anyway, I'm not sick or anything. It's just my voice goes in and out with the weather, dips and heaves and hoes. We had snow. Now the snow's melted. Now by Thursday, they're predicting a big old snowstorm with a lot of snow being dumped on upon us. But I woke up this morning, and it wasn't at 3 a.m. like it usually is, but it was at 4, <laughs> or 4.20 to be exact. And I wanted to make some cookies, but I have very little margarine left. I have no butter in the house, so I wanted to make cookies, but didn't contain either one. No margarine and no butter. Well, I've never made a cookie that didn't have margarine or butter in it, you know, um, unless it's one of those instant, you know, cocoa powder or oatmeal things. Actually, I think that has butter in it, too. Anyway, beside the point, I wanted to make cookies for the holiday, for Christmas morning, so I could have some cookies in my stocking. I always like to bake a little something special for my stocking. Do you know that I'll show it at the end of this video? But after I was born in Los Angeles, California, my grandmother, who lived in Florida, made me a very beautiful stocking. And it's huge with my name on it. I'll put a picture at the end of this video so you could see what it was. And every year I hang it up. Whether it has anything in it or not is beside the point. The gift of the Christmas stocking is the Christmas stocking, handmade by my grandmother. That's enough for me. I may be an odd bird, but that's plenty for me to know that she took hours making this. She took hours thinking how she wanted to design this stocking. Well, that brings me back to these cookies that I wanted to make without any margarine or butter. So I decided to look online, of course, cookies made without butter or margarine. And there were quite a few, actually. I was surprised. And a lot of them contained three quarters a cup of uh, vegetable oil. Well, I didn't want that much vegetable oil because something in my spidey sense in my gut said, uh, I don't know. I want a cookie that sort of holds its shape and doesn't flatten right out. And to me, at three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil, your cookie's going to be flat like a pancake. And I didn't want that. So I thought, what can I do? So I decided to do this. So what I think I'll do is I'll leave the full instructions of my holiday cookies with no margarine, no butter, into the description box below this video. It would be a lot easier, I think, all around for people to see what I've done. Now, I didn't go with the online recipe. I sort of made it up as I went uh, with a little bit of knowledge of banking. <laughs> Can be dangerous, but <laughs> I decided this morning I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to just use a little bit of common sense, have my fingers crossed, perhaps my toes, and hope for the best. So I measured out the flour, Harry Carey style. I didn't put it in there like I usually do perfectly and take a knife, you know, the backside of a butter knife and, you know, level it off. No, I didn't do that. I just put in two and a half cups of flour, Harry Carey style, and uh, I was happy with that. So if I needed more flour, I could always add it. And then in went the baking soda and the baking powder and some salt went in there as well. And they said to uh, combine it. So I combined it. I used like sort of half of their recipe and what I added on my own. So they called for chocolate chips. Well, I don't have any chocolate chips, but I have raisins, very tiny ones. And I have oatmeal. And I love oatmeal cookies, so I thought, since there is oil going in here, and some actual Crisco as well, which is shortening, solid shortening, and uh, I thought the addition of the oatmeal would be a good idea to keep the height of the cookie. 
So the oil, because I only used a quarter cup of oil, not three quarters of a cup of oil. That's just way too much in my opinion. And uh, yeah, nobody needs to look at that. Look away, look away now, look away. Oh my God, she bent over in front of the camera. I'll have to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> oh, you get the full Monty, as they say. Well, no. No, you don't. <laughs> Anyhow, that's what I use for that part. And now I needed to cream my eggs. And I was going to put the shortening in there. And then after I dumped it into the bowl, I went, hmm, perhaps that's not what I want to do. So I immediately took it right back out, put it back in the bowl I got it from. So then <laughs> I grabbed my sugar and my white sugar and brown sugar that I combined in that green bowl and I put it in the bowl. Now I find mixing things, if you're going to do it by hand, use a wooden spatula. So one egg at a time, we call for two eggs. I mixed it up with a wooden spoon and stirred and stirred and stirred. It didn't take too very long to come together. So I was happy with that. And I wasn't in a rush. I didn't want to get my mixer going, uh, making a bunch of noise in the kitchen. I just wanted a quiet morning of, you know, figuring out what I want to do. I wanted vanilla extract and almond extract, but I didn't have, I had vanilla, but I didn't have almonds. So I thought, huh, why don't I use lemon instead? Instead of a teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of almond, use two teaspoons of lemon extract. I do like a lemon cookie. And it goes well with the oatmeal. And it would go well with the raisins. So I thought, okay, this is a good thing. Oddly enough, I brought out, I found my old, old uh, Fuji camera. This is what I'm using to film this video. Uh, it's old, so hence you sort of back in the day of YouTube's videos where it was snowy. <laughs> and this camera kept trying, it was set on auto, so I kept trying to readjust and, and yeah, I just wanted to do it differently. Everything this morning was different from my voice to my baking. But you still have to go by the baking principles because it is, hate to say it, it is a science. You need this much of that and this much of that and you can play around with it a little bit to alter it. But in the long run, if you're too crazy, it won't turn out. But so creaming the eggs and the syrup, um, the sugars together to make a syrupy mess, <laughs> so to speak, it's what it looked like. It was, you know, smelling really good because I could smell that lemon extract over there. So then I added the shortening. So I had one fourth cup of shortening and one fourth cup of oil, and I figured that's only two fourths of the oil base that that I would need in these cookies. And it called for, the online recipe called for three quarters of a cup. And I thought, no, I'm not gonna use three quarters of a cup. I don't want that much. I'm gonna do it my way. <laughs> you know that song? <laughs> I did it my way. <laughs> Frank Sinatra, I think. Yes, I, I won't uh, bust your eardrums trying to sing it with a really bad voice right now or ever, because I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But I thought, you know, this might be fun. There with the oil. And uh, if, you know, I could, I could sort of tell if a, the batter's gonna be good by the consistency of the dough. So I had that going for me, thank goodness, because, you know, if it looked too runny or something, soupy, then it needed more of something, more oatmeal or more flour. But oddly enough, the measurements I used were perfect. It, uh, I can't believe it turned out as well as it did. But it did. So in went the uh, two teaspoons of uh, lemon extract into the, uh, to the wet mixture, which will be added to the flour mixture very soon, mixed up. And you don't want to over mix your cookie dough. 
Now when I put it in my mixer, I tend to over mix it. And the cookies tend to sort of come out tough and dry. So I decided I'm gonna do this by hand today. I think I have the energy in my wrists. Uh, my fingers are feeling good today. The weather hasn't, you know, brought on any arthritis. So I'm feeling great. Want these cookies mighty bad for Christmas stocking. So, in goes, very shortly, I had added the uh, the raisins and the oatmeal to the flour mixture. I don't know if you've noticed that when I did it or if I even filmed it now that I'm thinking about it. But I added the uh, wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. First with a spatula to get it all out. Now I'm left-handed. You know how hard it is to do this with your right hand? so your hand doesn't block the camera because there's no, I had the camera positioned on my stove which is to the right of me there's no room to the left of me to put it so anyhow sorry about the bowl in the camera and then I moved on to the wooden spoon again because that works the best when you're mixing any kind of flour with wetness when you make a bread or anything like that use a wooden spoon because You'll be glad you did. Let's just let's just put it that way. It makes life so much easier. And then you could scrape it off a little bit with the back of a knife, a butter knife, and then you know continue mixing and whatnot. So I did not want to over mix this. I almost wanted to fold it together first with the spatula, and then I moved on to my wooden spoon before the flour really becomes incorporated into the wet mixture and it starts to get a little bit sticky so I had my fingers crossed and I was hoping for the best first couple of turns it was looking really really good and I'm going by George I think this is going to turn out and I'm not going to have to add anything to it <laughs> there's blessings today all around in my kitchen <laughs> the cooking fairies are smiling down upon me or the Christmas cooking fairies, or the Christmas fairies, or the Christmas elf. He's around here somewhere. Yeah, I have to find him and bring him out, see if he wants a cookie. So I thought, okay, let's just lightly mix this together. Let's not beat the living Dickens out of it. It's not a Charles Dickens novel. So let's just be gentle with the dough and uh, see what happens. So I've made many a cookie dough and sometimes they, they don't turn out, sometimes they do, but I've always used my mixer. So I thought, huh, let me try this. Because I know you don't over mix muffins. If you over mix a muffin, it won't rise white. It'll be sort of flat. But if you lightly fold the ingredients together when you're making muffins, they rise beautifully. So. Now I decided to scrape the sides of the bowl because I'd mixed it enough and scrape that off and then get my ice cream scoop to get the dough balls out. So what I decided because of the oil and the shortening that was in the dough, I was going to chill the dough balls before they went into my preheated 350 oven. Now I have a convection toaster oven. Um, the online recipe called for eight to nine minutes. So I checked it at, at nine minutes and it wasn't done. It needed another minute. Of course that's my toaster convection oven so you know you sort of got to keep an eye on the first batch to see how quickly they cook. So mine took 10 minutes per you know per tray. I like to use these round pizza trays with parchment paper because the round pizza tray doesn't hold the heat. The parchment paper keeps things from sticking, so you never have burnt bottom cookies if you use aluminum. Now, I don't like to put my food directly on aluminum, so I always use parchment paper on there. Just cut a circle out, and uh, away you go. And these fit beautifully in my uh, convection toaster oven. So I scoop them out, and then I put the uh, trays into my refrigerator 
and I set up my little uh, area here for my cookies in the first batch turned out beautifully. Look at that cookie. I was amazed at myself that I made up this recipe somewhat, added what I liked. Uh, I wish I had the dried candied fruit like they use in fruit cakes. I think that would have been just magnificent, like candied pineapple or, you know, whatever, candied cherries. I think that would be great, like, like a fruitcake cookie. I wanted a fruitcake so badly, but trying to look online to get fruitcake, you know, the candied fruit for the fruitcake, I couldn't find it. You could buy a fruitcake already made, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make my own because I have a recipe for a fantastic fruitcake. And I know you're all rolling your eyes at that, but I usually start two months prior to uh, Christmas. I start my fruitcakes in October, and I have rum, and I use a half a cap full of rum once a week. I drizzle it over the top of my fruitcake, wrap it up tightly, store it, and then next week, following week, same thing, for two months. Oh my goodness, you don't drink and drive, you don't eat and drive with my fruitcake either because it's potent, but it's wonderful. So I just continued on making the cookies and they turned out beautifully. They rose the way I wanted them to. They weren't flat. They didn't, you know, they didn't turn flat like a pancake. And they stayed um, beautiful. As they cooled, they didn't sink when they cooled. So I was very, very impressed with what I had, you know, managed to accomplish this morning. Uh, just sort of winging it. I usually don't wing things like this. I usually follow, if it's baking like this, I usually follow it to a T. Like I used to have such trouble making pie crust and I would follow their instructions to a T. And they would never turn out. I just could not make a pie crust. I could do other things, more elaborate things. I make my own phyllo dough. Oh my goodness, but to make pie crust. <laughs> it wasn't the consistency when it's cooked that I wanted, but I finally figured it out. But that has nothing to do with these cookies, so I digress. I'm sorry. But I just, you know, every 10 minutes came out with another batch of four cookies. I put four on the thing because I didn't know how, you know, whether they would uh, spread out, but they didn't spread out that much, as you could see. They're the perfect size, and if you use a ice cream scoop and you sort of pack it with a, and then scrape it with the back of a knife, the top part of the ice cream scoop, so it's not poochy, and then just scoop it out onto your, your, your pan, and then chill. Cookies are, are best chilled before they go into a hot oven. So I had my oven really preheated up to temperature long before I needed to, to use it for the cookies. And uh, chilling uh, helped. It helps them not to go flat right away because a room temperature cookie into a hot oven will go flat right away. If you've ever had that uh, trouble with your cookies, try you know shaping it into balls or scooping it out with two spoons or using an ice cream scoop and then chill it for at least, at least, well, I used uh, not the smallest ice cream scoop, the medium one, so I chilled it for about 20 minutes. And as I kept making the, uh, the scoops and putting them on the tray, I you know, kept putting the tray back into the refrigerator and I had three trays on the go in the refrigerator. Uh, fortunately, my refrigerator was fairly empty of leftovers, so I was able to to do to do that but uh, yeah they turned out beautifully and I was very happy with the results of these cookies so this is my stocking that my grandmother made for me the stocking is 64 years old so some little things are hard to tell what they were that's a little bird that's a little doggy airplane, snowman, 
<laughs> the Christmas tree with the star hearts. The dog. Oddly enough, I've always had a black dog. Look at that. On the left, a rocking horse. Growing up, my grandparents bought me a rocking horse. Christmas candle, another heart. And I think that's, I'm not sure what that is. All I know that I could say this, I cherish this more than anything else I own, actually. She had never met me, nor probably had any prospects to have to meet me. But she made this for me. The strap says Merry Christmas. I can't get that on there. But as it turned out, two and a half years later, my father brought me and the stocking to Florida to live. Then he left. <laughs> but he brought the stocking, which I find is a Christmas miracle in its own, that the stocking came with me. Yeah. So that's my Christmas stocking.